This morning, Beto O'Rourke has done it again, outraising Ted Cruz for the second consecutive quarter. We'll discuss how Republicans are now responding. In studio, State Senator Connie Burton. Among our questions, what her campaign will cost to return to the Senate. Andrew White is a Democrat running for governor. So why then did he donate to Republicans? And how might this new revelation affect his campaign? And early voting begins in a little more than two weeks. We'll ask which side might benefit from a low voter turnout. From WFAA TV, this is Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley. Good morning. We begin with that Senate seat that goes back and forth between Republicans and Democrats. This is District 10, most of Southern Tarrant County. It also includes parts of Arlington, Bedford, Colleyville, and South Lake. Last week on this program, the two Democrats running for it debated right here on Inside Texas Politics. This morning, the Republican incumbent, State Senator Connie Burton, is here on her re-election campaign, among other things. And joining the questioning, as always, is Bud Kennedy of the Star-Telegram. Thanks for coming in, Senator. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Thank you for having me. On. It is Super Bowl weekend. Let's start <laughs> with a Super Bowl question. Not who you're going to pick, but let's start with the Texas Enterprise Fund. Oh. It, it, it's the fund that helps bring jobs and businesses to this state. Uh, Governor Perry supported it. Governor Abbott does too. It has also reimbursed Houston for hosting the Super Bowl. Major events fund. Too, right, so. right. You don't like this fund. The governor does. Are you right. going to push for getting rid of this next session. Absolutely, I'll continue to. Um, I fully believe, I'm a free market conservative, um, and I think where we've lost our way is is picking winners and losers in the marketplace, and I don't believe this is a, a function of government. Um, when we start to do that, we help some businesses over others, and um, that's not fair to the businesses that we don't help. Um, what starts to unlevel the playing field is when government gets involved like this. Capitalism, um, at its at its best is um, a level playing field. Um, when government starts to get involved, that's when things start to, um, you know, um, get unlevel and and helps those that we are helping. Well, Connie, the the fund reimbursed Houston last year because the the Super Bowl brought so much business to Houston. The concern is that if, if you do away with it, there will never be another Super Bowl in Arlington. Yeah, that's uh, I don't uh, that's not true. Um, Texas is healthy and vibrant because we don't. Don't have a state income tax. That's why businesses come here. That's why um, we see all these people leaving California and coming to Texas. Um, we've got, you know, a lot of natural resources. We've got low taxes, low regulations. That's what pulls people in. And again, um, we don't need to be uh, getting ourselves involved in the marketplace um, and excluding some businesses over others. Now, the city of Arlington uses the events fund to bring events, big events, music, sports events to AT&T. They've also used the Brimer Bill, your predecessor passed, right. to build stadiums. That's right. You, do you think that the cities shouldn't be doing that at all? Do you, so, do you disagree with, with having something like this that brings business to Arlington? Uh, yeah, as I said, I, am, I want to get rid of these funds. I have always said, and I will continue to say, I am going down to Austin to be a voice for the taxpayer. And this kind of thing is what's frustrating to all the taxpayers. It's like, why is my money being given to businesses. Um, they want it to go to core functions of state government, which is education, transportation, public safety, water infrastructure. That's what government needs to be doing. We need to let the private sector do what the private sector does best, and we need to keep government out of it. It's when government gets involved that it becomes a crony type thing. It's, it's crony capitalism is what it is. Senator, you talked about taxes, too. Let's talk about property taxes. They aren't low in this state. It's, right. It, they keep going up and That's up right. and up. And at some point, they're unsustainable. But you support uh, Governor Abbott's proposal to try to limit property taxes by capping how much local governments can increase uh, their revenue each year. Mayor Rawlings, Dallas mayor, was on this program here uh, recently. He said any such plan like this will impact city services. Well, so all that this plan is doing, which is what we did last session as well with our uh, property tax reform piece of legislation, is slowing the rate of growth. So we're not taking money away. We're just saying that at some point, um, at, above a certain amount, the voters should decide if they want um, that increase. So um, it's not getting rid of property taxes by any means, which is really something that I advocate and many of my constituents do. Um, 
getting rid of property taxes? Yes, yes, because you could never own your own home in the state of Texas what do you with the property. That with? I'd like us to. I'd like to see us go to a consumption tax. Frankly, um, you're going to have and 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 I'm not saying that that's perfect or that um, you know it's easy to do. Um, there needs to be, but there needs to be a discussion, a greater discussion about this because people are tired of not being able to own their home, particularly those who have who have paid off their home and say they're retired. Um, they're generally elderly, they're on a fixed income, and yet they still have exorbitant property taxes yeah. to pay. Therefore, and if they can't pay them, their, their homes can be taken away. That is not um, where we should be here in Texas. We should be um, defending those property rights, would and that's what I want to do. Would that consumption tax include home sales? Well, you know, that's the debate that we need to have, but we're not even there yet, which is very frustrating to me and many of my constituents. We need to have that debate. We need to talk about it more. I will tell you, last the session before last, which was my first session down in Austin, I went around and talked to many of the senators about this. And, and some were, you know, just didn't want to even go there. But we need to have that debate because Texans are speaking up loud and clear that they are so tired of property taxes, these exorbitant property taxes that are unaffordable and yeah. unsustainable, frankly. S Senator, uh, absolutely on that question. Isn't the real way, though, to lower <laughs> property taxes for the state to renew what it used to pay into education so districts don't have to make up this shortfall? Well. It, I will tell you um, something that I want everybody to understand is that um we are, what is the real problem in the state budget is is Medicaid funding. Um, it is now the number two driver in the state budget. Um, it's it, Health and Human Services is the number two driver. Within Health and Human Services, Medicaid is 78 percent of that. But, 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 so but we how, need to talk about that before we talk about, I mean, we would love to fund, I would love to fund all the core functions of state government more, but what we're not even going to be able to talk about that if we don't get a handle on Medicaid funding funding because it is going it is also unsustainable and going nowhere but up we're, so we're doing we're and we are and we are talking about that I'm on the health and human services committee which I'm grateful to be on we're, we're, um, and we're we talking about that, that. We, we have less than 30 seconds left here too um, four years ago this was a multi-million dollar election for your seat what's it gonna cost oh, for your campaign to return probably to the, the same it's probably gonna be 1.5 million, I would say. Um, we're doing very, very well. Um, we did outraise uh, in cash um, uh, our uh, can our. Democratic opponents this last uh, cycle. I'm continuing to work on that. We're getting out there. We're doing the job. We're getting our signs everywhere. We're knocking on doors. Right. Um, we're we're going to be very strong, and, and um, I'm looking forward to winning this election again. All right. Senator uh, Connie Burton, good luck to you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Democrats no doubt encouraged with Beto O'Rourke. For the second consecutive quarter, the congressman from El Paso has raised more money than Republican Senator Ted Cruz, whom he is running against. Republicans, though, are now responding. This is a story that Ross Ramsey is watching in Austin. He's the co-founder and executive editor of the Texas Tribune. Good morning to you, Ross. Good morning. How are you? We're doing well. You know, what's the takeaway with Beto's numbers and how exactly are Republicans responding? Well, you know, it's never great news for an incumbent to be outraised by a challenger. In this case, I think Ted Cruz will catch up. In fact, a super PAC showed up and raised $1.7 million on Cruz's behalf. But I think the real story here is that Beto O'Rourke is going to have enough money to tell voters who he is and what he thinks, and they'll either accept or reject him on that basis, but it's not like he's going to get swamped here. Is, is, any suggestion that Cruz might be in trouble by these early numbers? You know, I, I don't think it's great news for him, but uh, it's still a red state. It's very early in the race. Yeah. Cruz has plenty of time, a little early to call it. Let's talk about Andrew White, who was on this program not long ago. He's one of the Democrats running for governor. He has apparently given money to Kentucky Republicans. How is this revelation going over? Well, it's not going over great. You know, the Democrats are looking at him. His father was a Democratic governor, but he's relatively new to the party. They're looking at him trying to decide whether he's one of them or not. And he gave this money to Kentucky Republicans. He didn't say why other than that he did it as a business owner. So... Hmm. Um, I think anybody in the Democratic Party looking for an alternative, you know, use this kind of information. Interesting revelation indeed. Thanks, for Ross. Back to you in a moment. You know, it's not often that races for judge make the news, but that is all that Dallas Democrats are really talking about right now. And race is the dividing line. Sydney Walker from Coffee and Politics 101 is asking whether hard work is really a winning strategy anymore. Here she is with my voice, my opinion. A candidate running for a judge position said in front of me, I'm glad I don't have a black female challenger. In 
and I was really taken back by this because I thought, why would I agree with that being a bad thing? I guess the days of hard work and putting your best foot forward to get you ahead are over. This is not a democracy. When we're seeing legal cases against candidates and strategies to dilute the female vote in order to win elections. Supposedly, elections were about challenging the system and candidates to allow the voters to choose the best choice in their opinion. Voters, it's time for you to make your voices known at the ballot box. This is chess, not checkers. I'm Sydney Walker, and this is my voice, my opinion. It's a question everyone in Dallas is asking, what's up with all those bikes around town? What kind of changes will council support and why isn't our new police chief wearing a badge and uniform yet? Some of our questions for Mayor Pro Tem Dwayne Carraway in studio. And President Trump says he will testify under oath to Robert Mueller. When, where, and under what circumstances though? That's what sparked Flashpoint. Inside Texas Politics is back in three minutes. First or Sunday funnies. Even with tradition, the president trumpeted his not so many accomplishments. He took credit for low unemployment among black Americans, which he learned from the Golf Channel when he found out Tiger Woods was back. <laughs> and of course, when he, when he mentioned that, the crowd at the State of the Union, well, as you may have guessed, really ate it up. African American unemployment stands at the lowest rate ever recorded. <laughs> Imaginative Neverland takes you on an awfully big adventure where magic is all around us. The magic of Neverland at Costa Mignona, February 2nd through 18th. Tickets at costamignona.org. Can you find the magic around you? A car wreck will cause serious effects in your life. Long Car Associates, how can I help you? Long Car Associates will have a team of experienced lawyers working on your case, fighting to get you every dollar you deserve. 800, then all sevens. So I think naming our store The Dump might have been the stupidest business decision I've ever made. Or maybe really smart. We're called The Dump because they're great manufacturers that needed to get rid of product, and they dumped it on us. Immediately see savings all over on every tag. I love to hear people say, I didn't know you had this nice a product. The look on their face and the words that we hear from is just, wow, I can't believe that this store has what you have. To the dump. To the dump. To the dump. 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 Some things are big. Others are huge. It's Empire Today's half price sale. Get $2,400 of flooring for $1,200, $5,200 for an amazing $2,600. That's half the price of your entire purchase. Shop for carpet, hardwood, tile, vinyl, and laminate right from home and have it professionally installed. Don't miss Empire's half-price sale. Schedule now. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Today. Ready or not, here we fun. It's a whole new year of thrills at SeaWorld and Aquatica San Antonio. There's more to soak and more to soar and all new experiences in store. It's the most exciting year ever. Don't wait, come celebrate. Get two parks for one great price with a $200.